Ignition sequence Hi. start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. My name is Jim Bridenstine. I'm the NASA Administrator and we're at the Ames Research Center out here in, uh, in San Francisco, California, which uh, we've really enjoyed being here. I, w I wish I could tell you I'm here for the weather, but we've got very important work uh, that, we're, that we're doing to get ready to go to the moon. And this simulator that we're in right now is, is a big part of the systems that we will use um, to train our astronauts to, to land on the moon. And so, um, just having the opportunity to come out here and talk to the folks. Um, we've got instruments from Ames that will be landing on the moon next year under a program that we call the Commercial Lunar Payload Services. Um, they'll be taking uh, instruments to the moon that will help us understand and characterize the volatiles on the moon, namely the water ice. That's what we're most interested in. Um, and that'll be happening as soon as next year. And uh, a lot of the great work done here at Ames is gonna enable that to happen. So landing on an aircraft carrier, you fly um, what we call, we, we have what's called a flight director. So um, you've got um, you know, your, your, your center line and your glide path in, in, in what, what are, look like crossbars. And you're, as you're flying down the glide path, as long as your airplane is in the middle of those crossbars, you're on center line and you're on glide path. After that, you need to worry about your airspeed. And they've designed this system to very closely mimic what you would do in a, in a Navy aircraft landing on an aircraft carrier. This vertical line shows right now the, the center there, the black dot, that's where our aircraft is. Vertical line is saying, okay, we're left of center line. And then the horizontal line says that we're on glide path. So as we come down the glide path here, we keep our spacecraft in the center of those crossbars and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna be on center line and on glide path. Now the glide path is not linear. So it, it, it changes. Um, because when you land on an aircraft carrier, you're coming down a glide slope and it's just a straight line. In this particular case, we're actually, it's curves. So we're going to be flying kind of horizontally initially and then vertically. And all that's been programmed into the flight director. So again, as long as we keep those lines centered, we're going to be on glide slope and the glide slope changes. As long as we keep those, those, uh, the flight director centered, we're, we're going to be in good shape. Center cool. position ready for motion. Okay, and the computer is ready. Initiating it. So you can see right now the black dot is to the left of the vertical magenta line. That demonstrates we're to the left of, of the glide slope that we want to be on. And, uh, and the, the black dot is below the, the horizontal vertical line, which indicates we're below glide slope right now. Um, and so we're correcting. We're always, you never stop correcting. We're correcting to be on center line and on glide slope all the way down. And if we do this right, we'll hit our intended point of landing, which I think we will. You can see that pie wedge that just came in. That's just an indicator of our are you getting close to the landing area? And of course, that's a picture of the landing area. That's a camera on the bottom of the spacecraft looking at the moon. Uh, the co-pilot would be talking to me as I'm, as I'm flying it down. Um, and then, uh, of course, the, the command module, uh, what we call Gateway, um, is going to be in orbit around the moon and it will be talking, there will be a person on Gateway or maybe a couple of people on Gateway also in the net. Um, but not, not necessarily... Uh, intervening while we're in the middle of landing on the moon. So just so you know, we landed. We just had a successful landing. Yes, land. we are now on the surface of the moon. So cool. congratulations. Welcome to the moon. All right. OK, we're ready for the next one, which is uh, approaching the right with the low power setting. OK, let's do it. Computer ready. So this time, we're going to intentionally start off lined up right. We're going to bring it to the left. Um, okay. And then we're flying a, in this configuration, we're flying a much bigger spacecraft with the same uh, thrust as the previous spacecraft, which means we just have to be a lot better at anticipating where we're going and 
um, and how to correct to get where we're going. Requires just a lot more fuel burn is what I would say. More, more aggressive maneuvering. But also a lot more anticipation. And this is why AIMS is so important. AIMS Research Center is critically important because we have the knowledge. It says, you know, the, the, the lander was too big for the engines. is because we, we tried it out in the simulator. We modeled it out. We had our test pilots fly it here. And they came to a determination that um, we needed bigger engines if we're going to have a bigger spacecraft landing on the moon. And all that was done here at Ames. All right, we're on the moon again. All right, good job. Thank you. Back to dock, please. Right. Have you been doing this all, all day? Uh, I think I've done it a dozen times now. <laughs> cool. We're going to the moon in a way that we've never gone to the moon before. We're going to go sustainably. That means that the landers that we take are going to be reusable landers. And the command module that will stay in orbit around the moon is going to be reusable. Think of it as a uh, small space station in orbit around the moon. It's also important to note that this time when we go to the moon, we have a very diverse astronaut core that is highly qualified. If you go back to the 1960s, our astronauts were selected from fighter pilots and test pilots. There were no opportunities for women back then. Now we've got this very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps, and they're ready to go to the moon. Um, we're going to be able to have women astronauts walking on the surface of the moon. Why is that, why is that important? It's important for me personally because I have an 11 year old daughter and I want her to be able to see herself as having all of the same opportunities I had when I was growing up. Here's the important thing I think that uh, I hope your audience takes away. This time when we go to the moon we're calling it Artemis. Why are we calling it Artemis? Apollo, the Apollo program from 50 years ago. Apollo had a twin sister in Greek mythology and his twin sister was named Artemis and she happened to be the goddess of the moon and now we have a new program going to the moon with a diverse astronaut corps that includes women so in the Artemis program now we're gonna send not just men to the moon but also women to the moon with our very diverse and highly qualified astronaut corps